Well, it's been nearly a century since women earned the right to vote. The suffrage movement was a long and painful process that many fought for. As Patricia Vallone reports, one historic landmark has documented it all and still remains to this day right in the center of political history. You can't hear their voices in this old film, but make no mistake, these women were far from silent. They were the leading advocates in the suffrage movement that eventually established voting rights for women. There were arrests and almost riots and women were hurt. The, they threw rocks, they threw bottles. They had the um, campaign banners torn from their hands and thrown onto the ground. That led to another tactic that they were using, which was picketing the White House. It was a volatile time as World War I had already started. And so here we have these women who were jailed for minuscule charges. Their families didn't even really know where they were. They didn't have a chance to talk to any of their family members. They were thrown in jail, so they decided to go on hunger strikes, and then they were force fed. Many of them were, they had their front teeth knocked out because they would shove these, violently shove these hoses down their throat so that they could put this mishmash of eggs and, and water and sometimes milk into their stomachs so that these women wouldn't die. Once women obtained the right to vote in 1919 and it was ratified in 1920, leaders of the National Woman's Party set their sights on obtaining the Equal Rights Amendment. By 1929, the party had moved into this home in the district where some of the women actually lived. Inside this house, women planned and plotted how to make a difference for their gender. The location on Capitol Hill was also the birthplace of both picketing and lobbying. This jail door pin was worn by women as a badge of honor for their time in prison for the cause. Memorabilia from that time period can still be seen in what is now called the Seawall Belmont House and Museum. One of the great things about this collection is that we have so many of the original banners. Um, the banners would be created for pickets, for speeches, um, for rallies, and so it would show the different themes that they were interested in, and you'll see a lot of them start the same way. But they say, Mr. President, they would hold President Wilson accountable. And this is a replica of the old card catalog used to keep tabs on lawmakers, a strategy still commonplace among lobbyists today. The Congressional Voting Card Index, um, they kept this catalog with a file on every Congress member, um, their voting record, any statements they made on suffrage, as well as personal information. Um, so maybe his wife back in the district was interested in suffrage. Uh, maybe he had a daughter in college they could go speak to and um, sort of get to the Congress member that way. As for the Equal Rights Amendment that women have been trying to pass for nearly a century, it almost came to fruition back in 1972 when it passed Congress. But only 34 states ratified the proposed 27th Amendment, and 37 were needed. From Capitol Hill, Patricia Vallone, CTV News. Thank you, Patty. The Seawall Belmont House and Museum sits at the corner of Constitution Avenue and 2nd Street in Northeast in the district. It's open for tours on Fridays and Saturdays at 11 a.m., also at 1 and 3 p.m. For more information, call 202-546-1210.